Hello guys, lots of people have been asking me about automatic gearboxes and it is a bit of a minefield out there because all the brands seem to call them something else. They've all got their own sort of brands for their gearboxes but really they break down into just a few different types. So I'm just going to talk you through those and go over some of the pros and cons. I've got some notes here so if I keep looking away, do forgive me won't you? First we're going to start with the automated manual. So this is in quite a lot of French cars. So it's sometimes ASG, EAT, ECG, ETG. You'll see all those terms used for it. Now, these things are cheap to produce and they can be quite fuel efficient, but they're not very nice to drive with in my personal opinion, but yours may differ. Uh, they can be very jerky and I think they can be quite hesitant. Like, for example, um, my personal experience with one of these in a Citroen, was you pull up to a roundabout, slowing down, slowing down, realise you need to pull away, and the car's going like, and it doesn't seem to be able to work out what gear it needs to be in. That's not great, and it could be dangerous in some circumstances, but I guess you would adapt to it if you used it over a, over a period of time. Next is the single speed gearbox. Now, this is on most EVs, not all of them, but most EVs have this, because really an EV doesn't need a traditional gearbox. You've got all the torque as soon as you touch the power, so you don't need gears to take you through the, the range as you would in a petrol or diesel car. So there's not too much to say about them. They're great, they do the job. There's not really that much to go wrong with them either. So there you go, moving on. Now we've got the torque converter. That's known by several different things. One's the Geartronic, Tiptronic, Steptronic, uh, G-Tronic, all, all types of torque converter automatic. Um, these have been around for donkey's years. If you bought an automatic car 25, 30 years ago, it probably had a torque converter in it, and some cars still do. Um, they're reliable, okay? They're proven by time, they've been around for donkey's years, and they're usually pretty smooth and pretty quiet, so not too bad, but they can be fairly greedy when it comes to fuel consumption and a little bit sluggish, like don't expect rapid response when you kick down or anything like that. It's, they, they can be a little bit sluggish in fairness. You will still get these today in cars like, like huge luxury saloons, like a seven series or like a massive SUV will often have a torque converter in it. And in some cars, they, they kind of suit it. So um, yeah, that's it, that's the torque converter. So right, next one's the dual clutch automatic. So as the name suggests, it's got two clutches. These are in most VW group cars, they're called DSGs. In Audis as well, they're called the S-Tronic. So you have to be careful because some Audi S-Tronics are torque converters and some are DSGs. Uh, Power Shift, which is Ford. Porsche call it a PDK. They're all dual clutch automatics, okay? The good thing with them is they're really quick to change gear. They're very responsive, you usually got paddles on your steering wheel and they're so responsive and they're brilliant to drive particularly if you like a more spirited drive, shall we say. And they're pretty fuel efficient as well, especially compared to some of the other automatic transmissions out there. Now, the, the bad things with them, you will read up on these that with some of them in some years and some models, there's reliability issues and they're very complex. So whenever you put complexity into something, it makes it more expensive, more difficult to fix and possibly more likely to break down. So think about that. And they can be a little bit jerky especially when they get a bit older, if they haven't been serviced, they can be quite jerky. I think with any of these automatic gearboxes, servicing is key. Make sure you keep on top of that gearbox servicing, and if you buy a car that's got some reasonable miles on it and it's never had its automatic gearbox serviced, get it done. It's the best couple hundred quid you'll ever spend. Right, and then finally, we've got the good old CVT. Now, CVT means continuously variable transmission, and it works quite differently to a normal automatic gearbox. So rather than the mechanicals that you would normally expect to find within an automatic gearbox, the CVT is a bit closer to the kind of gearing you get on a push bike. And that might sound alarming, but they are some of the most reliable automatic transmissions on planet Earth. And uh, they have been for quite a long time. They're mechanically very, very simple. So there's not so much to go wrong with them. Very reliable. The other thing with CVTs is they tend to be pretty good with fuel economy compared to some of the other transmissions we've talked about here. The bad thing is sometimes the driving experience. 
So they're less controllable. Like if you're used to driving an automatic, you can control the gears very, very well with your right foot once you're used to driving them. CVTs are less controllable and you don't get a feeling of a gear change in them. Uh, so if you kick down, for example, and you, you want to go past something on the motorway or whatever, and you kick down, move into the middle lane, in other automatic transmission cars, it's going to feel much like you've dropped down a gear in a manual gearbox. So you drop down a gear, you overtake, done. In a CVT, when you kick down, you just hear the revs going up and it's not a pleasant sound. So you, you'll just kick down and it'll go <laughs> and you feel like the thing's about to take off. So it's not the smoothest or coolest thing in the world, but they're massively reliable. I had one of these recently in a big Toyota SUV and it was a joy in that thing. No problems with it at all. And, you, and really for that kind of car, it suited it quite well. I wouldn't want one in um, a 300 horsepower hot hatch. You know, it's horses for courses. Uh, Toyota famously used CVTs and Honda use them. And I mean, the two of the most reliable car brands around, aren't they? So the summary there really is that there are pros and cons of automatic gearboxes. Every different type of automatic gearbox has got good things going for it and not so good things going for it. I personally like the DSG gearboxes, the, the dual clutch gearboxes, but a lot of people will call me a mentalist for suggesting that. But I've never had a problem with one and I've done about 400,000 miles in those things. Uh, hope you enjoyed that video, guys. I've just made it to answer quite a few questions I've had on the subject. Not the most exciting of subjects, I know, but hopefully some of you find it interesting. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you haven't already done so, and do consider subscribing to my channel. Also, go and check out my website, notaguru.co.uk. There are loads of ways you can support the channel on there. And I've also got a new blog that I've started, and I'm going to be doing quite a lot of writing on that blog. Uh, you've also got links to my merch store and all those kind of wonderful good things. So go and check it out. And maybe go and check this video out as well. I think you're gonna like it. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe, see you soon.